You guys have been asking me for this. Today we're checking out Create Studio. This is a platform that does like 3D and 2D animation, has lots of characters and scenes. And I know you guys have seen it a lot, even though it's a newer platform because you're asking me about it constantly. In full disclosure, the team at Create Studio reached out to me, gave me free access to the platform and asked me to look at it for you guys. But this video is not sponsored, but I just wanna let you know, I did not pay for this with my own money. But even though they asked me to check it out, I always give you my honest opinion, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're gonna talk about everything Create Studio today, and let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Here is the Create Studio platform. If we wanna create a new project, let's go on over to this button here, create a new project, and we can set our project settings. So you can see you have different resolutions here. You can even do Facebook or Instagram stories. Let's just do 1080p and we can change our background color. I'm just gonna set it to white and create project now. So let's take a quick tour of the interface. Over here on the left is going to be kind of your browser. So this is where you can see all of the media that Create Studio supplies to you. If you click over on this media button, you can upload your own media and it'll appear here in this browser. You can access the media library, which is that you can download still images and video from Pexels or Pixabay if you click over here. And you can also access a stock uh, audio library for music cuts as well. Let's close on out of that. Moving up here to the top is where you would add text. You can also add shapes using this drop down here. You can add more icons using this drop down here. And then your default cursor would be the arrow, but you can also use the hand to move your canvas around. And then you can also resize your canvas so you can zoom way in or you can just fit it to the screen or you can go to any of these other sizes. Now over here in your project settings, it's gonna be kind of like your inspector where you can make adjustments to all of the elements that you are dropping into your project. So we'll work with that a little bit more later. And then down here at the bottom is the timeline. So this is where, this is the like visual representation of the sequence of your elements. Um, I will say, I love the Create Studio timeline of all of these like online cloud platforms that I check out. This one definitely has the best timeline. This entire layout to me is very similar to Final Cut, which if you are a fan of my channel, you know Final Cut is like mm, my favorite software. I use it day in and day out in my day job as a professional video production person. And so I really like the layout of this a lot. It makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm a big fan of that. I really love the timeline. You know, a lot of these platforms, you can only jump around in half or quarter set second increments. Whereas here I can just like go little by little, like just like a normal functioning timeline. So I do love that very much. So now let's get started with our project. And I always like to start with a script because I always like to edit my visuals to whatever the voiceover or soundbite or whatever is gonna say. That's the way I time out my projects. So I wanna show you that Create Studio has a um, text to speech feature. It has auto-generated voices. Let me show you how that works. We're gonna go on over to our browser over here. Make sure we're clicked on media. And we're gonna click this little icon text to speech. And I'm just gonna copy and paste from a script I already wrote for this project. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to drop it in here. And what I wanna draw your attention to is that you can add pauses to the auto generated voiceover by typing in this code bracket pause equal and then however many seconds you want the pause to be. So in this case, I did one second pauses. Now let's see here, we've got a lot of different languages that we can choose from. I'm gonna stick with English and I wanna choose a female voice. Let's choose Kate, I don't know. And we're gonna hit generate. And really quick, that script was generated in a voice. We can preview it here. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content ideas. There are plenty of places to find inspiration. 
First, look under the so you heard that our pauses definitely worked with these auto-generated voices. I always say it's best to go with a real life narrator, but I do like to show this feature because it's something that does add to the uh, usability of this program. Um, but as you can tell, the inflection is very robotic. It's not amazing, but we're gonna work with it today. So I wanna import this into my media library and I can close out of here. And now you can see that my text to speech is here in my project media folder. So what I wanna do is just drop that right into my project. So I just drag it and drop it over the canvas. You see this canvas gets this blue highlight around it. And then here is my audio down here in my timeline. And I can slide it down so I can have the video start a little bit uh, before the voiceover comes in. So now let's start building our project. The first thing I want to do is drop in a scene and drop in a character. Uh, first, let's listen to that first line so you guys know what we're looking for based on what the script says. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content ideas. There are plenty of places to find inspiration. Okay, great. So um, we're talking about starting a YouTube channel, needing content ideas. Let's look under backgrounds and see if there's a scene that we like that makes sense for that. Now, right away, I can see this scene here, Film Studio. I'm just gonna drop that in. I'm gonna slide it to the very beginning of my timeline. And if I wanna preview, I just hit the space bar, just like in Final Cut Pro or any other editing software. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content ideas. Okay, great. Now we wanna drop in a character. So I'm gonna go back over to, um, on the studio part of the browser, I'm gonna hit home. And here are our characters. Now you can preview what the characters sort of look like. They've got colorful, supreme, elegant, but the one that I think is really exciting people is 3D. So, you know, I review a lot of these platforms this this 3D look, this like very Pixar Disney look is awesome. And I really love that about Create Studio. I think that's what a lot of you guys are really kind of noticing and wondering about these 3D characters. So let's click on that to see all of our 3D characters. And here you go. I have to say there's not a ton of characters here. Um, because I think Create Studio is a newer platform, I think they're like, they're, I know that every month they're adding more and more scenes, more characters. Um, so there's not a ton of options yet. But in all fairness, they asked me to review this platform. So, you know, they, they must have felt good enough about, about all of these characters. So I just wanted to address that there's not a ton in here. Um, but I will say there's a lot of diversity and that is something that I've heard people complain about with a lot of other platforms that there's not enough diversity in the character. So I would say there's a lot of diversity here. So let's uh, pick Kate here. Now you might notice a lot of these have blue icons on them. That is because they have not yet been downloaded into my system. So if you want to use a, a every character, every prop, everything that you want to use in Create Studio, you do have to download it as you go. It takes like half a second. It's not a big deal. And I think it kind of just saves space on your computer maybe. So um, I don't really mind that, but I have already downloaded Kate. I'm going to drop her in here and here she is. And now what we can do with Kate is we can change all of her actions. And I like that a lot. So she can do uh, several different actions at once. So first let's just play it back and you can see what she's doing. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content idea. Now if she's not on the screen long enough for me, so I have to keep adding actions to her to keep her on the screen as long as I want. So I just want to add an action here. I want her to stay idle and you see now she's on there for longer. So let's play that back. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content ideas. There are plenty of places to find inspiration. So now that she's been idle all this time, I want her to like start thinking and get an idea because that will match our script. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna select Kate again. I'm gonna hit add action. And then here are all my options again. I want thinking then gets idea. There are plenty of places to find inspiration. First. Okay, so I think that the voiceover ends too soon um, for her action. So what I'm going to do is drag my voiceover down a little bit. To find inspiration. There we go. So inspiration, she points inspiration. in the air. First, 
Okay, great. So next up, we want to add our next scene. Let's just listen to the voiceover so we can hear what that sounds like. First, look under the YouTube trending tab. What trends can you make a video about? Okay, so the next scene is about looking at the YouTube trending tab. So what I'm going to be looking for is like a computer screen. Um, and I do have a screen recording of the trending videos on YouTube that I want to drop in as well. So let's go on over back to the browser. Let's hit home to get out of characters. So now I see this category here, devices. And there's only a few devices in here, but the one I want is right here, this MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna drag this as our next scene and I can move this around. Now you'll see that this uh, MacBook Pro came with two elements. First, we've got the MacBook and then we've got this one called replace video. This is actually the video clip that's inside that I can change to make whatever I want inside the MacBook. The next element is this, you see this like candy striped uh, gray on gray bar. This is that colored background and it looks like it's grayed out like that because it's locked. Let me unlock it. And now I can modify the color of that. Let's change it. Now it's actually, looks like it's a gradient. Yes, so there's two different colors here. You've got this like pink and then it goes into the red and then I believe I can change like the placement of the gradient by playing with this white bar and I can have it be a little bit more balanced of color between the hot pink and the red. Let's pick a couple different colors here. What if we did like this and then for the other gradient we could do more of like a purple. How do you guys feel about that? I want to move this all of these elements down a little bit in my timeline. So I have to hold shift and select each one down and drag it. Okay. First, look, look under the... Okay, and the next thing I want to do is just replace this video in here. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go on over to media and I'm going to upload my clip. So I'm going to hit this plus sign to import media. There's the video I wanted. Now, if I want to replace just this clip, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to select just this replace video clip here. I'm going to hit this replace button, and then I'm going to select this media. And look, it just replaced it perfectly for me. Let's play it back. Inspiration. First, look under the YouTube trending tab. What trends can you make a video about? Okay, so the screen recording starts to move. I actually want it to move sooner. So what I'm going to do is trim and then push it back to the beginning. All right, that scene is done. Let's move on to the next. Let's listen to the script. A video about. You can also review products you see advertised online. If you're curious about a product, other people will be too. Okay, great. So we're going to be talking about reviewing products. So we need some props or products that you might review. Let's head on over to the browser window again, go from media to studio and let's go to the home panel. So let's change up the color of this background for this next scene. I'm going to head on over to this icon here and go to shapes. I'm going to grab this rectangular shape. I'm going to scale it up to fill my canvas and let's fill it with a radial gradient and let's just pick our colors. And again, we can change like the way the gradient looks. Oops. And let's drop in our props. So let's head on over to, uh, I don't know, let's look at icons. And we have options of either 2D or 3D icons. Let's start with 2D and see what we've got here. All right, I like this camera. I like this TV and the PlayStation. So these are gonna be products you might review on your YouTube channel. I'm going to line them up on my screen, just resize them. Just click and drag, super easy. So 
So what I would like to have happen is for these objects to come up in sequence, not all at the same time. So let me just play this back for you. The review products you see advertised on. Okay, great. And then I want them to animate in. So this is where you get those really cool, elegant looking animations um, inside Create Studio that are really eye-catching. Let me show you how to do those. First, we're just gonna select one prop. Let's select the PlayStation. And we're gonna head on over to the inspector window and we're gonna hit motion. And now we can toggle between in and out. So how it's gonna fly in and how it's gonna fly out. So let me just show you what some of these do. If you click on one, watch this create studio icon here, it shows you how it's gonna come in. So there's your preview. So you just click, 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 and you can see how they're gonna come in. There's a lot of different motions in here. And this is the one I want, bounce, scale up. Now you can see, since I've got it checked here, if you look down at my timeline, there it is, bounce scale up. It's been applied to my PlayStation. Let me also review products you see advertised on. And if I want it to happen faster, you see this little white dot here? If I hover my cursor over it, I get this like sliding arrow. I can just slide this back to make the bounce happen faster. Review products you see advertised. That's what I want. Okay, so I like this. So I'm going to copy this bounce by hitting Apple C. I'm gonna select the TV and I'm gonna hit Apple V to paste the bounce again and then again to the camera. So now they're all bouncing in at the same duration, but so one at a time. Bounce, you see advertised online. Perfect. All right, now I want them all to fly out at the same time at this point. So I'm just gonna trim them up in my timeline and then I want them to animate out as well. So let's head on back over to the inspector. Let's hit motion. And now let's toggle over to out and let's have them slide bottom. Now the term slide bottom, when I first, you know, got into create studio, I didn't, it's like confusing to me. I think like I would prefer it just said slide down because that tells me where it's going. Whereas slide bottom, I don't think is descriptive of enough. Let's play that back and see how we like it. People will be too. Okay, it's too slow. People will be too. So again, I'm just gonna trim it real short. I want it to happen real fast. Two. Great. And then I want all of these devices to slide down the same way. So Apple C, Apple V. Will be too. Perfect. Review products you see advertised online. If you're curious about- All right, the last thing I wanna to add to this scene is some text. So let's head on over to this top icon here that says T for text, and we get a text box. And then if we wanna modify it, we are going to go to settings in our inspector window. And now for text, these are all the options we have. There are a lot of fonts in Create Studio. If you hit this drop down button, look at how many fonts there are. There's a lot of fonts in here. Some of them I've never seen. Some of them I'm obviously very familiar with. Um, let us pick, and there's like really creative fonts in here too, but there's the basics, Roboto. Um, I saw Railway in here. So like a lot of the fonts that you would typically um, be using. Open Sans is in here. Um, but then there's these also like a lot of really creative ones. So what is this baboon? Let's try that. And to modify the text, we just double click our text box. Let's do, I'm gonna do in all caps. I can change the font size. I can change the spacing. I can change the color. I can change the rotation. So I can do a lot of different things here. I'm gonna change the color to like a really pale blue. And then how do we want the review products text to come in? Let's go to motion up here in the inspector. Let's hit in. Let's have it slide from the top. Review products, you see. No, that's not what I want. See the way this is confusing? I want it to slide bottom and I want it to land here. Let me try that again. Review products you see advertised. Okay, great. And I want it to happen much faster. So I'm gonna shorten that duration. Review products you see advertised online. If you're curious about a product, other people will be too. 
And now I want it to slide up. Let's hit motion again. We're gonna go to out and slide top. Also review products you see advertised online. If you're curious about a product, other people will be too. So now let's drop in our third scene. Let's head on over to the browser. I'm gonna select backgrounds, I'm going to Supreme, and I'm gonna select this one, laptop close up. What I'm gonna do is just drag it and drop it onto my canvas. And here it is. Will be too. Lastly, look at sites like Reddit or Quora. What questions are people asking on those forums that you can? Okay, so there's some elements in this scene that I actually want to get rid of or replace. Now, let me show you how to do that. You can see that this background, it's all one element here in my timeline, but I've got these little black triangles in the corners of my bar, if you can see that. I can actually expand this background so I can modify things um, individually from this background. So I'm just gonna double click it to open it up. And now let me show you what we've got here. We've got our main project timeline. I can click back over to that and that is the timeline we've been looking at this whole time. Or if I double click, I can expand. And now I've got this laptop background where I can see all of my elements that are in this background. So first of all, this book here, I just wanna delete that. I'm just gonna select it and hit the delete button to get rid of that. Then I actually wanna start modifying the stuff inside this laptop. So if you can see here, I've got another grouped element here on my timeline. Again, with these little black dots, I'm gonna double click that and that opens it up. Now I can play with all of these individual elements here. The first thing I wanna do is get rid of, um, there's a sound effect on here I wanna delete. There is this cursor I wanna delete. And then I actually wanna replace this image and this text image. So what I'm gonna do is select this picture. I'm gonna head on over to media and I have elements that I've uploaded here. The first one is this Reddit logo. So I actually wanna take this picture and I wanna replace the picture and I'm gonna select the Reddit logo and I'm gonna resize it. And then I'm gonna select this text box. I'm gonna replace that and I'm gonna use the core logo. And I wanna resize it so it's about the same size as the Reddit logo. And then what I wanna do is I want these Lastly, look at size elements to kind of scale in after the laptop slides in. So let's Lastly. play with that. So first what I need to do is I'm gonna shorten this one up and I'm gonna change the motion of it. So I've got it selected, I'm gonna to go to motion and what I want it to do is scale up on the in. So let me see that. Look at sites like Reddit or Quora. What? Okay, that's happening too slow, but I do like it. Look at sites like Reddit or Quora. Okay, and now I want the Quora logo to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this scale and I'm going to paste it um, onto the Quora logo and I'm going to push this down. Look at sites like Reddit or Quora. What? Perfect. Okay, so I'm happy with this scene. So now let's go back to the main timeline. I'm just going to hit main project over here and do. Lastly, look at sites like Reddit or Quora. Perfect. So we've got it. So the last thing I want to do is add a quick closing scene. So I'm going to drop in that film studio again. And let's drop Kate back in. All right, I've scaled Kate up really big, as you can see, and she's losing a lot of resolution. I just want to point that out to you guys. Good luck. And that is the end of our video. Maybe I'll add a little text here too. They do have text animations. So if we wanna modify this text, it actually brings us to a sub timeline. Um, so let me just show you here. When we opened it up, you can see at the uh, top,
top left of the timeline, we've got main project. That's gonna bring us back if we double click it to our main project. But then if we double click this, we get this lush title here. And this is where we wanna make some revisions to our text. I wanna make it a little smaller. I want to rotate it a hair on the Z axis. And I wanna move it kind of over here. And then if we go back to our main project, we can see the modifications I made reflected in our main timeline. Let me hit play. Leo. Good luck. All right, so we're almost done with our video. I just wanna put a few more finishing touches on it. I wanna add some transitions between my scenes. I wanna add a little music and then we're gonna call it good. So let's go back to the first scene over here to find inspiration first. So right there is just kind of like we just have a cut. So what I want to do is add a transition um, to bridge between this first scene with our character and then the scene of the laptop. So let's go on over to studio. We're going to go to home and there is a transitions bin. So what we need is one that goes in and out. Let's try this one, a slide left. And I'm going to drag it and drop it in our timeline and we can make it a little shorter if we so choose. Great, and then we can change the colors of it. So for this transition, if you want to change the properties of it and you can see we've just got this white trim here and then this blue screen as well. Let's select the blue screen. Let's hit color. Let's make it a gradient. First, look under the YouTube trending tab. What trends can you make a video about? You can also review. Okay, so that was our first transition. Let's add another one because we've got this here. And the last thing we want to do is add some music to our project. So let's head on over to the media tab in our browser. Let's go to the media library. Let's click on over to audio. Let's just listen to some of these cuts. Now let's take a look at our finished video. Ready to start a YouTube channel, but need content ideas? There are plenty of places to find inspiration. First, look under the YouTube trending tab. What trends can you make a video about? You can also review products you see advertised online. If you're curious about a product, other people will be too. Lastly, look at sites like Reddit or Quora. What questions are people asking on those forums that you can answer in a YouTube video? Good luck! Let's talk about what I like and don't like about Create Studio. What I love most is this 3D Pixar look. I think that's super eye-catching. I think that's why a lot of you guys have been asking me about this platform because it does look different from like everything else out there. And I do agree that it is really good. I love the way that looks. It just looks so much more high-end than those 2D animations. Although you can get those 2D animations in Create Studio, that 3D Pixar look is something that's really special. I also love the layout. Like I said at the beginning, it reminds me so much of Final Cut Pro. I love the timeline. I love the functionality of it. I love how you can like expand or collapse scenes so you can really get in there and customize elements and then collapse it down on your main timeline so it doesn't take up a lot of space on your timeline. I like that a lot. Um, I also like how many fonts there are. I love that it has this uh, script 
to speech feature where you can type in your script and then it auto generates speech for you. You know me, I don't love those voices. They always sound so robotic, um, but it's good to have it if you need it. And I love the way that elements animate in and out in Create Studio that they have that ease in and ease out effect where things kind of like accelerate or decelerate. That's a very modern, fresh look that everyone's looking for instead of like linear moves. Um, and so it gives you that really poppy, fun effect that is very untrend and I don't see that going away anytime soon. So I think that's great. What I don't like about Create Studio is that I don't think there's enough media in here yet. I don't think there's enough characters, even though the characters are super diverse and I love that, I don't think there's enough of them. I don't think there's enough props. There's just not enough stuff in here yet to satisfy me. Um, but it is a new platform and they are adding stuff every month. So if you're watching this video, later down the line from when I published it, there's probably gonna be a lot more content in there for you to play with. I also don't love the way the elements are organized. I have to think really hard about where things are and how to access them. So I've got that browser window on the left. I have to toggle between media and studio media to get the stuff I've uploaded or the stock video or sounds. And then there's the studio tab that has all the cool elements that come with Create Studio. But then there's also that menu at the top of the frame that has shapes, text, and like other icons. And honestly, I don't get why it's organized that way. I don't think it's great. Um, it's just, it just seems like there's, it's too complicated. Like just simplify that, you know what I mean? Um, I also think Create Studio could benefit from a camera effect. And that is something a lot of platforms have been adding. That's where it almost looks like you're zooming into the scene. Um, I do think that Create Studio could add that feature and it would be really, really great. So what do I think about Create Studio? I think it is a great platform for someone who's a little bit more technologically advanced because it does so much more and you have so much more control over the elements, it's not necessarily for someone who it has no experience and just wants to drop things in and move on. Um, you can do that, but to really get the max out of this platform, it takes a little bit more time. It takes a little bit more know-how. It takes a little bit more understanding of like the canvas and moving things on the X, Y, or Z axis. It takes more understanding of like nesting within the timeline. It's just a little bit more advanced, which I think is what I like about it because you know, like I'm a professional editor. So to me, all this stuff is great for someone brand new. It might be a little bit uh, overwhelming or there's definitely going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But if you want to take the time to learn it, I think you'd be really happy with this platform. So I am going to give Create Studio a thumbs up, even though I think there's a lot of room for improvement. They're off to a really great start. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Create Studio because it's something you guys have been begging me to take a look at. What else are you seeing advertised to you that you want me to look at? Let me know in the comments because that's where I get my ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again.